So things are not going particularly well with the Lincoln Loco right now. So to distract you from that and all the bad goings on uh, in the background, we're bringing back the eating game, which if you're a long-time subscriber, you'll probably know about. If you're not, then you've got an awful lot to learn now. Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco. Today, two games for you. We're at home in both of them, at home to Huddersfield in the first one and at home to Bolton in the second game. They're two big games and hopefully we need those three points because things are starting to look a little bit tight down at the bottom of the table. There has been a ridiculous amount of things going on since you were last here. Um, I'll update you on as much as I can right now, but first of all, we need to look at the highlights from last time. Uh, and it's, as you can see, it's not been that well, has it really? Last time you were here, Cardiff and Swansea were the teams we played and had two heavy, heavy defeats. Uh, we bounced back, though, with a 1-0 win against Sheffield Wednesday. 92nd minute win there from George Byers. And I thought, right, things are starting to look up. But obviously, we didn't because you can see all the red that follows it. A 2-1 loss then to Wolverhampton Wanderers was uh, a game which you deserve to lose. I think Wolves deserve a lot more goals than that. Uh, they weren't very clinical where we had like the odd chance and made use of one of them, which was not good enough really we just didn't do play very well we then played Ipswich in a game which was very very even they scored a penalty which broke the deadlock uh, otherwise it should have been a nil-nil really nothing particularly going on in that game unfortunately for us uh, we did get a very good win uh, I say it's a win it feels like a win it was a one-all draw with Middlesbrough uh, Middlesbrough who are top of the table we managed to grab a one-all draw with them we played very very well that game uh, complete antithesis of the games going before it and of the games afterwards as well uh, after that great draw we did lose to Derby 3-1 uh, didn't play very well at all Naki Wells came on scored two for them uh, Tarek Fosu has been the player that's scoring goals for us recently uh, when we have scored goals as you can see not many goals scored at all in fact uh, one two three four and then eight and we'll, we'll get to that in a minute uh, but not many goals scored since last episode we then came to Rotherham who are below us in the table so we thought right, we've got to get over a win here this is important for us in a relegation battle and we won 4-0 not entirely sure how we've managed to score four goals because uh, we haven't scored four goals uh, actually since Preston. So we have scored four goals. I was going to say we haven't scored four goals at all this season in any game, but we did once. So that says something. But we've conceded four goals quite a lot of the time, actually. Uh, a lot of times we've conceded four goals. So after that, we thought, right, things are going to turn around for us. This is the turning point of our season. We had a team meeting just before then. That's one thing to update you on. Uh, Alex Woodyard, once again, getting all the players riled up at me, getting very, very cross. It's not looking good for me right now in terms of the players and things like that. But after that, I thought, right, things are going to turn around. We played Millwall, lost 3-0. Uh, the less said about that, the better, really, because we didn't play well at all. We didn't turn up, and we didn't turn up against Stoke either. So two 3-0 losses on the bounce. Not the best of times going forward. It leaves us 20th in the championship now, which you think is pretty low. However, we're not going to get relegated. I've decided we're not getting relegated um, we're only nine points clear, actually. I thought we were a little bit more than that. We're nine points clear, but I can't see us being caught up by ten points, essentially. I can't see that happening uh, with only nine games to go. I just I just can't see it happening. Usually, they'd say 50 points is safety. I reckon 45 points is safety for us this season. I just can't see. I mean, Cardiff is all but gone. Blackburn and Bolton may have a chance to catch Rotherham, but I don't think they're going to catch us. I think we're too far away now, um, which is good for us, obviously, but not the best. So, that you say, what has happened since we last year? Well, the big thing was that Alex Woodyard was worried about the poor dressing room atmosphere, which is right, is very, very poor right now. 18 people agree with him. So, Alex Woodyard, he's no longer captain. I got rid of him as captain. Bostwick's captain now because Alex just kept rallying the players against me. He's a prick, basically. I mean, the only thing he's ever done, actually, is just get players to come against me. Because we had one last season as well, a team meeting at the start, and he riled the players up and said, right, Tom's not very good, let's get him sacked. We didn't get sacked. We actually got promoted. So that shows what he knows. But he's done it again. Other than that, when he was captain, he just said no to everything. Literally no. If you remember, if you've watched it, he literally said no to everything I asked him to. Welcome players, no. Uh, Choose to this player, no. Talk to this player for me so he doesn't want to leave the club. No, I don't want to do that. Like, he was just a prick, basically. So I've got a bit of a battle going on there. But at the same time, my managerial support is quite good. So it, I'm conflicted with this, really. I'm not entirely sure what to, what to say about that. But... I've signed a new three-year deal. That's also something that happens. So they're not going to get sacked me anytime soon, whatever happens. If we get relegated even, I'm not getting sacked, as far as I'm aware. So there we go. We also had Regen Day come in as well. Uh, the Regen's looking looking pretty nice. Uh, 
the only good one that came in though was Stefan Wilkinson, a centre back, sixteen year old centre back. Um I guess Terry McCow was pretty or McCoy rather was pretty decent. I guess Ian Dowell, but they're only four star potential ability. Stefan Wilkinson flirts between four and a half and five. Depends which coach you ask really. So that's something to say about that. He's the only one that came through. He looks alright to be fair. Um there was a region that had like one first touch. Um, and it wasn't him because he's on four first touch. But there was a one region he came in with one first touch, which isn't great. I mean, he's only got one off the ball, which isn't much better, really. So don't expect to see him in the first team anytime soon. That's all I'm going to say about that. Anyway, on to the real... Anyway, on to the real news this episode. Um, because we're doing so poor, and I can't see us picking up wins against Huddersfield and Bolton, despite Bolton being below us in the table, we're going to try something different just to distract you. We're going to go back to the eating game. Now, many of you are sitting here thinking, what the hell is he on about? What the hell is an eating game? Uh, essentially, I was very bored and hungry one day. So I went to McDonald's, but thought, oh no, I've got to record as well. Why don't I combine the two? So like, it must have been September or something like that. I um, basically made an eating game for Football Manager. Uh, so I'll explain the rules to you now. I'll put a screenshot on the thing, on the screen, otherwise the thing. On the screen, there'll be a screenshot uh, with the instructions of the FM eating or drinking game, depending on what you want to do. I just think... Um, eating is slightly more YouTube friendly as opposed to getting wasted or something like that. But essentially the premise of this is that I was given a box of quality streets today. So I've got a big box of quality streets. They don't sponsor me, but if they'd like to, uh, I'd very much appreciate that. And uh, essentially, I'm going to be eating, hopefully, the whole box of these throughout this episode with various things going on. So the instruction should be on the screen now if I remember to do it in editing. But uh, one eat. So one, I'll be eating one chocolate if it's a goal. Any goal, one chocolate. Every yellow card, an eat. Every substitute, an eat. No goals and a half, all quotes equals one eat. And every player below a 6.5 at the end of the game, which is, oh my god, that's probably quite likely at the moment, considering how many, oh, how bad our results have been. So we could be in the whole 11 at some point at the end of the game. Um, every pointless highlight that is shown, also an eat. And an obviously clear-cut missed chance, uh, that is also an eat. We now move on to the big boys, the two eats. A goal from a set piece, because it's not just the goal, it's the goal from a set piece, a bit different. Injury to a player, or a goal that is then signalled as offside, they're two eats. And then on to the big ones. Every red card, I've got to eat three things, and every own goal, I've got to eat three things. So, um, actually looking at that, I could be eating quite a lot of these quality streets, which uh, is already making me feel sick, actually, thinking about it. Right, on to this game against Huddersfield then, and we're playing the 5-3-2 formation, or 5-2-3 formation, whatever you want to call it. Um, I call it the, the formation where the defence do not like playing with each other. Um, but they're the only three fit central defenders we've got at the moment. And none of them have a decent partnership with each other. So that could be a bit problematic for us. Either way, Lumley's in goal with Halkin Spurt, Boswick in front of him. Uh, Lenz comes back from like a million months on an injury. Like he's literally been injured constantly for a while. So this is his first start back. Uh, Roberts on the other side. Walsh and Byers combine in the middle. They've been playing pretty well together recently, so I like to keep them there together. Uh, Charles lays that attacking midfielder. And Big T and Fletcher starting up front. Big T has not scored a goal since, I think, the first weekend of the season. 21 appearances, two goals. Like, he's, he's literally been wank. But it's still good enough to get him a call up to Hungary. He's been playing for Hungary recently, or whoever his country he plays for. So, someone can see something in him. But right now, he's only playing because he's the strike we've got. Right, let's get these bad boys open. I had a few in earlier on, actually. So, the, the pack is slightly down, um, which could be advantageous because we may run out, which would be nice because I might, I don't know, I, could, I, I genuinely could be sick at this, I don't know. Right, kick off then. And uh, we're not going to pay any attention to the game, we're literally just looking out for various eating and drinking game things that we can get ourselves onto the bandwagon for. Uh, hopefully there'll be nice early goals, we can get the ball running, rolling pretty, pretty early on. Hopefully it's for us as Big T comes forward. Big T shot from the edge of the area, just wide the post. He's getting close to scoring, his only his third goal of the season. He's literally wank. Like, such a waste of a lone player. I'm going to have to do some serious, serious recruitment and, and chopping up next time. Oh, hold the hold the phone. Michael Boswick, get a card. I'm going to be eating a, uh, a toffee finger first one round. Toffee finger is the first one to eat. I'm a big fan of these ones. Nice, long, thin, uh, filled with toffee. Um, which, you know, call a toffee finger. All right, let's carry on. It's actually quite chewy. And quite hard to get through, so I don't know how well this is going to be going. Things are looking pretty calm right now, though, so not a lot of eating going on right now. Last time I did it, I had 20 chicken nuggets, and they nearly all 20 in the first game. So we had to really ration ourselves in the second game. Byers has picked up a knock. Now, this is usually two eats. 
However, I think when I was making it, I meant if a player came off the pitch. So I think for a less severe injury like that, just the one eat. So we're going to go for a Strawberry Delight, I think these ones are called. Uh, not very nice. They're like one of the worst ones in the pack, really. Dark chocolate with some strawberry in the middle, but, you know, I've got to get through them all at some point. Interesting as well how we're looking like we're the team on top, considering we've been awful for ages. And Huddersfield have actually been pretty decent. They're just out for the playoffs, I think. If we scroll down, yeah, they're sitting ninth. So they should be walking all over us today, really. But in initial stats, uh, it don't look at possession. Actually, that's quite bad. Walsh, though, puts the ball into the area. It's cleared away. Could we go one up now in this highlight as, as Huddersfield are now starting to break? It doesn't look like we're going to go one up now. Schindler on the ball. Plays it to Lau. Back to Younes. Younes coming forward. Oh, Masonda. Charlie Masonda through to Sigurdsson. Sigurdsson through to that man. Lumley, though, makes a cracking save. And he's just signed a new contract at the club. I think there's about 15 players up for new contracts in the season. I'm going to let them all go, apart from Lumley, I think. We've got a lot of dead wood at the club, basically. And I think over summer I need to clear it out and just get some a lot of new faces in. So I think we're going to do a special episode next time out. Uh, not next time, at the end of the season, rather. As Big T oh, came very close to scoring there. Yeah, I think next time, at the end of this series, um, we're going to do a special episode where we're just going to clear the team out, put loads of players on transfer, decide who we're going to keep and then try and rebuild the squad essentially. So that'll be probably on Saturday, I think that'll come out. Uh, I think tomorrow will be the last episode of the season as Sigurdsson scores right before half-time, which has ruined my half-time team talk, but also means I've got to eat something else. This one that I've just picked up now is a, an orange cream, which is slightly better than the strawberry ones, I think. But I could be lying to you because I've not had these in a while. It's been pretty pretty kind to me so far, actually. Not many, well, there's only one yellow card. There's no goals, well, one goal. Uh, there's been no pointless highlights or obvious clear cut chances missed. No goals from set pieces. No red cards, their own goals, importantly, as well. Huddersfield, though, coming forward. Younes on the ball. Shot fired into Lumley, and Lumley makes a nice save there. If we can get a nice counter attack going now, that would be delightful. That counter attack is not happening, though, as the Huddersfield come forward once again. Younes on the edge of the area, gets past at least three players there. And somehow, Charlie Masonda puts it well wide the post. I mean, I said we were dominating in the first half. I mean, just look at those stats now. Just just look at those stats now. That is dreadful. Tactically, something has to change. And by something has to change, we're going to go to a, a diamond. I've, I've literally decided this right now. We're going to a diamond. Fullbacks are going to go on to attack, because why not? We'll bring Coyle on to go in that um, CDM position. And we'll also bring on... Darpino, who's just also come back from injury. We've had a ridiculous amount of injuries the past few weeks as well. Um, he can sort of come on as a Carrillo. That makes sense to me. Uh, and I guess we'll leave it like that for now. I mean, Big T's played rubbish, but we've got the other strikers on the bench. And this is what I mean, like, we've got so much dead wood and just crap players at the moment. Something like that has got to change. Oh, and me two subs as well, so that's two chocolates I've got to eat. Big T coming forward, though. This could be a third chocolate to eat if we grab a goal. Uh, we're not going to grab a goal because they've just they've just tackled us. Um, I'm eating a, I think it's like a caramel caramel drum, I think it might be called. As Sigurdsson nearly scores for them. So let me have another one. What, where are the names of this? A caramel swirl, this one. Which is very nice. I enjoy these. Now, if you have quality streets in your home around Christmas time, these green ones, the most underrated quality street there is essentially everyone turns their nose up at them because it's green wrapping like Ugh, i don't want a green chocolate but actually all they are are just solid blocks of chocolate and they honestly most underrated ones there i love them to bits i mean not being funny but this game has been very very quiet it hasn't been a pointless highlight to my knowledge although i've not been keeping too much tabs on that no yellow cards no oh, a yellow card just came up for huddersfield there as well i don't know if you saw it a yellow card just came up. Lens also picks up a knock, so that's another one to eat. So they allow to take the corner. He's got the yellow card. So that's two I've got to eat now. Um, let's pick out one of these ones as well. But Charlesley coming forward. Could he get a ball in to get an equaliser? Big T. Big T has scored his third goal of the season to make it one all against Huddersfield. And now I've got to eat a third one as well. What an absolute turnaround this could be. We're going to go to Overload. We're on fluid already. Get creative. We've got six minutes to grab a goal, boys. Come on. Oh, no. Here they come. Don't do this to me. Oh, big T. Big T, man. Come on, do your thing. Fletcher now coming forward. Play it to Charles Lee. Charles Lee. I've got a chocolate. Oh, my goodness gracious me. Did you just see that goal? Did you just see that goal? All right. 
Well, I've now got a fourth one to eat. The first one's in my mouth, but it's really, really sticky. So I'm going to pause a few minutes just while I eat these next ones. Number two, number three, number four. Well, I mean, what a turnaround this has been. We need to come back down onto counter now. We'll go structured as well. If we can just hold on for these next two minutes, that would be absolutely incredible. Saying that though, Huddersfield now have a chance to come forward, although we just made the interception. Now Charles is coming forward. Fletcher back to Big T. Big T coming forward once again, gets himself tackled though. And now Sigurdsson has been let through. Oh my God, how's he got through? Honestly, how did Boswick let him through like that? I mean, I feel like that is snatched from the jaws of defeat. And furthermore, that's another goal. They've just made two subs and one of them's got injured. So, um, or has he just come on as an injured player? It says returning to full fitness. I think that doesn't count. So I've got to have three. Three more, Jesus Christ. These purple ones also as well. People look the nose, turn their noses up to it because it's purple. But actually, they're quite nice and caramelly on the inside. So they're, they're quite good. Everyone's favourite is also the toffee penny. Everyone loves a good toffee penny. Oh God, that is really solid. Right. To be fair, if you told me at the start of the game would I take a draw against Huddersfield, I'd say yes. So I can't be too disheartened. But the way we conceded that the second goal was really, really poor. Um, Fletcher, they're coming forward. We've got a chance now right at the end of the game. Big T. If he just passed that across to Charles Lee, that would have been... That, that could have easily been 3-2, but instead he was a bit selfish. Already thinking he's got his goal, he can get another one. Despite only scoring three goals this season in total. As a striker as well. He decided that he's just... He's too big for his boots. And um, I'm looking forward to the day that he returns to Leeds after his loan spell here. Because he's been absolutely woeful. Right, there we go. Full time against Huddersfield. 2 all. I'll take that. We've actually played quite well. Possession-wise, woeful, but in terms of shots, we actually got our shots away today, so that was quite nice to see. Now, how many players have finished below a 6.5? Um, Roberts has, Lenz has, but actually, are we looking okay? Oh, Tommy Spur has as well. Okay, well, I've got to have three chocolates now because players finished on some woeful ratings. So, one for every single player below a 6.5, as it says here. Here we go. Two and three. Right, here we go then. The line up against Bolton. Bolton sitting below us in the table, so we've got to be picking up points in this game, really. Uh, Lumley starts in goal, as always. And we've got a back four of Friars, Halkins, Boswick and Roberts. Uh, I, don't know, I still don't know how Boswick is still playing for us, because he is just not very good anymore. Um, I say that. I say that. Yeah, he's only good for League One. I thought that could have been just Championship. Uh, but no, apparently not. Uh, Coyle comes in as that CDM. Uh, Walsh and McGinn start in the midfield because literally every midfielder we've got, uh, other than these three, are injured just about. Fosu and Prince Harry on the wings, uh, starting just behind Fletcher, who is our lone striker today. He's actually done so well this season, I think. He's on 17 goals in total this season, which I think is a good return for a team that is down in 20th in the Championship. So he was a very good signing. I mean, especially our Middlesbrough bought him for 6.5 million as well. Did not recognise that. Jesus Christ. He had four appearances for them. That's nearly one and a half million per time he played. Jeez. Fosu then, the first highlight of the game, puts it into his McGinn. Onto Halkins' head. And how has Halkins sent that wide? I mean, actually, that, that's got to go down as... Uh, it's on the list here somewhere, isn't it? Obvious, clear-cut chance missed. That I mean, I don't know how else to describe it other than... A ridiculously clear-cut chance that he's just absolutely bottled. So I've got to eat one for that. And I'm already feeling sick already thinking about it. But how how did he miss that? Prince Harry then coming forward. His cross collected. I thought that was going to drift right into the path of Ashley Fletcher there. A £6.5 million man he used to be. Now worth not even a tenth of that probably. This is actually a huge game in the scale of things. We could go 12 points ahead of Bolton who are in the relegation zone. And I can't see him getting then 13 points to overtake us. Like, I really do think if we win this game, we're going to be absolutely fine. Corner, though, coming in wasn't a great one, but Coyle on the ball once again. We've retained possession. He's played back towards Friars, who puts a great ball out to Fosu. Fosu now puts it into Fletcher, and Fletcher has put it away for us. 1-0 up against Bolton. That is what I'm talking about. We've got to eat a thing now. So this is a another finger. I don't know what it's called, a finger. Uh, no yellow cards or injuries, though. This guy started injured, so don't worry about that. Nothing happening too much, though, in terms of that. Walsh, though, with another chance for us. On to head of Coyle. 
Coyle over the bar. Is that a clear-cut chance miss? I'm not going to say it is. I don't think so. Other end of the pitch now. Here come Bolton. Tackled. Brilliant stuff. Prince Harry, though. Coming forward. I'm trying to eat now. Fletcher, get it to Fosu. Get it to Fosu. He's not. He put it to Prince Harry. Prince Harry, put it. Just put it in there. Coyle. Oh, my God. We could be 3-0 up in this game. That is that is a clear-cut chance missed and a half. Another one. It's going to go in the mouth now. I'm also very, very aware that I'm eating all the good ones. And all the really crap ones are left now. I'm going to have to start eating the crap ones. There's a lot of these strawberry ones that are left now that aren't very nice. So we have to have a few of those now. As uh, the corner came in, it wasn't great. But Walsh on the ball back to Coyle. Coyle, who I can't believe still missed that opportunity there. I mean, we should be throwing a up, really, if I'm honest with you. He's put it out of place. So that was just like the ending of the highlight of the last one. Not a point in this one. I'm not going to force myself to eat another one for the sake of it right now. Oh, I, I think this is starting to affect my performance on the microphone as well because I'm. Why am I opening it? I don't need to eat it. Jeez. Um, things are going well. You're capable of being better though. A few players looking happy with that though. Ugh, but I'm starting to feel sick and it's affecting me now. I just want to sit here and be like, Ugh, yeah, this is happening. I don't, I don't know if that even made sense as well because oh, I'm I'm losing the plot right now. I mean, the results have been positive at least. It's just that me and my eating has not. Oh. Hold the front door right now. Here's a yellow card that I've missed. Here's a yellow card that I've missed. And here are two substitutes. Right, I've got two of the bad strawberry ones and two of the bad orange ones. So, let's get through them. Number two. Number three. It's taken me a lot longer to eat these now. Like There's, there's a, a big gap between each one now. Oh, it doesn't help that they're not that nice either. Like these, these chocolate and orange, the strawberry and orange ones, they're just not that good. It was with dark chocolate as well, which makes it worse. And number four. Right, another highlight then for us. Please don't be a goal, really. Oh. I'd normally be celebrating a goal like this. Halkins has actually got one now. But um, it means I've got to eat more. And right now, I'm not I'm not a fan of that right now. Bolton also have a highlight coming forward. Williams, oh, they've just got, I've not even opened, I've just opened this one. Pause the game. And here's number two for that goal. Oh, you've got to be joking me. I've just read it down here. It's been ruled out. Offside goal. Oh, if I can find it. Where has it gone? Offside goal. Yeah, that's that's another eat. That's two eats for an offside goal. Interestingly, the first two eats of the episode. But, you know, they're two eats for a reason, aren't they? they don't happen very often. Like, genuinely, I'm not going to make subs this game because I don't want to eat any more. But we have got two games coming up in like, because Easter period now, I think it is, in game. So we've got a lot of games coming up very quickly now. We've just got another yellow card as well, another another substitute to them. So, I mean, is it is this an orange one that I've just picked up? I can't tell. I think it is. I'm going to ignore that one for now. Like, literally all the good ones are gone now. All the good ones are gone, basically. Okay, here's that yellow card. And this is their third substitute. Oh. Right, let's play. The quicker this is over, the better now, I think. Essentially. I'm, I'm not making subs. Everything is telling me to take Coil off. But then my stomach is telling me, just don't do it. I mean, thankfully, no one is below 6.4 this game. Or 6.5. So I don't have to eat anything. Is there going to be a final twist now as we come forward? Because I can't take much more of these, these quality streets. I don't want to touch chocolate for like... At least two hours after this, I'm sure. As Prince Harry came pretty close there. We've now got... A final highlight, hopefully which is a closing one of the game. My voice has gone really weird now as well because of so much stuff in my throat. And that is the end of the match. Well, we've done the job we had to do, and that was to pick up three points against Bolton. I am very confident now in saying we are not getting relegated this season. So I'm going to say passionate to the lads. I'm happy with the result and the way you play. So leave that match there. All very good and dandy there. As you can see, Newcastle and Leeds are the teams coming up who are fifth and fourth respectively. So... Expect two heavy defeats there next time you see this. But if we look at the table properly and fully now, and we scroll down here, we are currently 12 points clear of that relegation zone. I can't see it happening. I genuinely cannot see it happening now. So, with that in mind, next episode will be Barnsley and Aston Villa, just to close off a season like that with two games. Um, I was thinking of doing a similar thing like in the previous two seasons, because it's been quite exciting at the end. Uh, we've played like... I don't know, the Leeds game, then showing little highlights from these next games and then play the last game as well, because it's exciting. So I want to bring you on that journey. However, considering nothing is going to happen, we're not going to get relegated or promoted. 
we're just going to sit there mid-table. There's no point doing that. So I'm going to show you Barnsley and Aston Villa next time out for the last game of the season. I know it's been quite a short season, this one, uh, in series that we've done. However, like we're not, we weren't going to do anything. So I'd rather get through this quickly to get to next season where something actually might happen. So that's my thinking there. Uh, so we'll do that. So that'll be tomorrow, Barnsley and Aston Villa. And then, as I said, on Saturday, we're going to do a little bit of a team review. And I'm just going to show you which players I'm going to cut and what we're going to have to look for over summer, basically, to try and get ourselves up the table next season, perhaps challenge for playoffs and things like that. So thank you very much for watching today's video. If you've enjoyed it, please do drop a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll see you next time for more Lincoln Loco action.